This conference will now be recorded. So I'm here with Pat Whelan, the chief executive of Luminultra, one of the leading companies in uh, Canada, which is pioneering some of the solutions for COVID-19. It's a delight to be with you, Pat. Um, Pat, for those people in the audience who don't know anything about you or Luminultra, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and the company? Certainly, and thanks again, Pierce, for, uh, for making the time today. Uh, so Luminultra is an international market leader in biological testing. Uh, since our inception in 1995, we've grown from a, uh, a Canadian startup to a uh, international organization with operations in six countries around the world, uh, selling primarily to dozens of Fortune 500 customers around the world. And our area of focus is molecular biology, uh, testing kits in the municipal and water and wastewater space. Uh, at least that's what it was up until the uh, pandemic hit in uh, uh, early 2020. And we've now expanded that expertise into environmental testing as well as clinical testing. Um, so it has been, uh, we'll say, an interesting first half of this year. Yeah, so, so the last three months have been just we could never have dreamt them 12 months ago um and i know that for you in particular there's been some significant developments in the last three months can you can you just share with us some of those yeah it's it's been an interesting uh, interesting time it all kind of uh, started in the middle of march when our prime minister justin trudeau uh, issued a call to action for industry across canada to uh, participate in the fight against covid 19 and specifically was asking at the time for uh, assistance in manufacturing things like personal protective equipment and ventilators um, and also diagnostic testing. And when we heard that, we got in contact with uh, people in the federal government, specifically the Public Health Agency of Canada, and we very quickly realized that we could help in a very significant way uh, in shoring up the supply chain for these uh, reagents that are needed uh, to carry out COVID-19 tests across the country. They, they, they can't have believed their luck. They put out this call for tender and one of their own local companies comes up. It's just incredible. Sorry, I interrupted. Carry no, on. no, no, and you're absolutely right. And they, they didn't know to ask us uh, because they didn't know that we existed, uh, to be honest with you, because you know the vast majority of our business had been uh, more B2B uh, so out of sight from the general public and international, you know, less than 10% of our, our business was inside of Canada. Um, so, you know, it, it was almost like a, a, a match made in heaven. You know, the, 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 the government had this requirement for uh, great amounts of these reagents and we have the capability to produce them. So within a couple of short weeks, uh, we were producing a half a million tests per week. Uh, and we will be doing that uh, through the uh, the end of the first quarter 2021. We've already delivered five million test equivalents uh, to the Canadian government uh, since we uh, we made this initial uh, discovery and collaboration with the uh, government of Canada. So that was kind of the we'll say the uh, the match that lit the fuse. Um, and as we we move to scale up our production. Um, to be able to not only provide these free agents for Canada, but other countries uh, abroad. Uh, we, we've constructed a new state-of-the-art production facility. We've increased the size of our team uh, to be able to do all of these things. But we also realize that in addition to clinical testing, which we're, we're getting deeper and deeper into all the time, that there is a, uh, a significant opportunity to combat the pandemic through environmental testing. Um, and environmental testing is, you know, it, it, it's, it's really the way to catch the virus uh, before it gets to new people would be the best way I can describe so, it. And is this the virus. early warning system or is this the, um, uh, or is this something different? Well, it's, it's a combination, I would say, of early warning, but also a little bit of a post-mortem uh, analysis of, of what's going on in a specific environment. Um, you know, the, the environments I'm talking about are the areas where we all live, work and play. Um, and the priority, obviously, is on high traffic areas. So think of things like transportation, um, hospitality sector, restaurants, bars, hotels, uh, sporting events, casinos uh, and, and a, a litany of other things, not to mention healthcare, uh, you know, hospitals, yeah, yeah. Uh, long term care facilities. Uh, which I think have borne the brunt of the, the pandemic 
uh, in terms of the number of people who have been impacted um, in terms of caseload and, and um, unfortunately deaths uh, here in Canada. And I think it's been the same in, in other parts of the world as well. Um, the, the simple fact of the matter is that the virus <clears throat> uh, transmits from person to person through other vectors, uh, through the air, through surfaces, um, and the science is still evolving. There's, there's still a lot of literature that's being developed. Um, but what we know is that people can not only uh, infect another person through direct contact, but also through vectors of air uh, and surfaces. Mm -hmm. But the, the really interesting one um, that, that we'll talk more about here today is the potential for wastewater to act as that early warning system that you mentioned, Pierce, of, of being able to determine um, the, the presence of asymptomatic carriers without actually having to, uh, to, to run tests directly on people. And on this, uh, yeah, this is obviously part of the Water Action Platform. We've followed this intensely over the last uh, two or three months, this idea that there could be this early warning system. And, it, and there's so many questions that it throws up, and I, I'd love to hear your insight as to, well, what do you think are the questions that the utilities need to be need to be thinking about and trying to answer if we're to make that come real? Yeah, look, there's there's a lot of them. Um, you know, it's it's not unfounded for the monitoring of wastewater to provide information into the, the habits or the health uh, of a general population. I, I think back to studies that I've seen, um, you know, in, in my evolution as a chemical engineer around using wastewater as a surrogate to determine the, the, the usage of recreational drugs. Uh, this has been something that has been in the literature and it's really interesting information and it confirms what you, you think you already know, uh, that recreational drug use is higher on the weekends uh, than it is uh, during the, uh, the weekdays. Um, but now we're finding out you know, the same thing can be used for uh, illnesses, for viruses. Um, and the, one of the natural ways that our body sheds uh, things that it doesn't want in its body um, is by uh, elimination you know, yeah. through waste. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we're finding, and there's researchers looking at this all over the world around, um, you know, the, 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 the ability of COVID-19 testing in wastewater, actually specifically SARS-CoV-2 testing in wastewater as an early warning signal. But the things that we need to know uh, from an industry perspective to be able to best help uh, all of our stakeholders around the world is understanding how frequently do we want to test? Uh, where do we want to test? Um, you know, is the preferred model to look at testing uh, on site or, you know, is it more convenient to consider like a mail-in service uh, around that testing? And is SARS-CoV-2 the only thing that we're concerned about? You know, should it be bundled with, uh, you know, other common microbial measurements like E. coli or Legionella, things like that? I think we're looking for input from uh, from the industry on all of those kinds of things. But the number one thing that we really, you know, are, 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 are contending with right now and want to understand is what are the drivers for adoption? You know, is it, are, are people willing to do this kind of testing for the greater good uh, of their city, their, their, their province or state or their country? Um, or does it need to be regulatory driven? You know, do we need to be working? And, with that, and that throws a really important, important. Yeah, and that throws a really important question as to who's going to fund this, because it sounds like the science and the the appetite is there, both from the utilities and from the supply chain. But there's a big question around who's going to fund this at the end of the day, because um, this is for the public health good. Um, so that's a, and I guess we don't know what that answer is right now, but we have to trust that the leaders of our nations uh, will will apply their brains to that to that problem. Um, uh, absolutely. Uh, like we we get interest from all over the world every day, uh, inquiring about our capabilities to be able to test SARS-CoV-2 in wastewater. And these are the early adopters. These are the people who are seeing the literature. They're they're reading about mm -hmm. it in the news, um, and they're intrigued about the concept. Uh, but they don't really know how it would be implemented beyond it's an interesting thing. Um, I think there's a greater collaboration, a greater discussion that needs to be had to determine how is that data going to be used, uh, who's going to pay for it, uh, how are we going to pull it all together. There's there's just a lot of unknowns at this point, and I think a greater collaboration amongst industry is going to be a necessity to to potentially harness an extraordinarily powerful tool. 
So let me ask that in a very specific question as to, you know, there are 300 plus utilities from all around the world who are engaged on the water action platform. I don't know how many of them will tap into this, this webinar, um, but, but if you could talk to them and ask them, you know, uh, a question or, or appeal to them for doing something to help with this, this exercise, what would, you, what would you be saying? Who does the testing? would be my number one question for them. Uh, you know, again, we have an extraordinarily uh, powerful opportunity to determine the, the presence or absence and the quantity uh, 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 within, within those two goalposts of SARS-CoV-2 in wastewater, um, basically with a, a test that takes about an hour um, that could be done on site, it could be done mail-in, but ultimately, you know, we need to know who does that testing? It is the preference to do it on site with existing staff, or is the preference to have you know samples collected and sent into a, a location um, that can do the testing and report back in a couple of days? Uh, that would be the number one question that we're interested in, in assessing because that it, that informs the product development um, and helps to create a product that people are going to want to use. Brilliant. That's really good. Well, we'll make sure that appeal goes out. I, I can't, um, I can't help but ask. Do you think um, now is a good time for innovation, or do you see? I mean, it feels like you, as your organisation, you have flexed and adapted and and innovated the hell out of this. Um, is that what you're seeing, or am I just getting the wrong end of the stick here? I would say, Pierce, not only is now a good time; it's it's a necessary time uh, for innovation. Uh, the world as we knew it uh, from three months ago, from six months ago, has changed, and it has changed in many ways that are permanent. Um, and I guess that's the one thing that we can always plan for in life is change. It's just this is a lot of change uh, in a very, very short period of time. Um, you know, and and you know, we're an innovative company, always have been at our core, um, and and we have a couple of core values in our organization that have informed our decision making as we've uh, gone through the the transitions we have over the past three months uh, one being challenging the status quo which is you know continuously improving and asking questions and trying to do things better and the other uh, probably even more emblematic of everything that we've done is remaining flexible at all times um, you know I, I never ever envisioned that this company would get into anything beyond the water and wastewater sector uh, least of which things like the clinical market but here we are and that's based on our ability to be flexible um, every day and twice on Sunday <laughs> Great. But, uh, what is, what's the phrase um, a necessity is the mother of all invention or something isn't it and i think that's absolutely true it's the organizations that can flex that will thrive and those that can't uh, aren't going to make it um pat it's been terrific talking to you is there anything else you'd like to to cover in this uh, in this conversation yeah the only other thing i'll put out there pierce i mean obviously the 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 we're not nobody really knows how long uh this this uh, pandemic's going to last and uh, you know, we talk about first wave and second wave, or maybe it's just one long continuous wave. Who knows? You know, we're all in this together and we're all, um, you know, simultaneously hoping for the best and, and planning for the worst. Uh, <clears throat> but we, we all have, uh, you know, different, um, we'll say, uh, 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 challenges with which we have to contend. Uh, one of them, obviously, is economic. Uh, you know, there, there, there's just a lot of uh, additional expenditure that is going into combating this pandemic and uh, we all know that eventually everything has to equal out. Uh, one thing I'll put out there is that we have some new products that are coming up uh, in the middle of this summer, uh, some automated measurement products that I think would be very beneficial to our, our clients in the wastewater space. Um, essentially a capability for measuring the true food to mass ratio uh, in an activated sludge plant through a combination of online ATP measurements, uh, which we're calling bug count online. Uh, this product has been developed and is, is going through the paces uh, over the past year, but we're finally launching that in July. Um, and then the second thing is through a collaboration uh, with Suez Analytical Instruments. We have the capability for measuring uh, food uh, through TOC measurement. Um, and those two things together, uh, we've been able to demonstrate will have a huge impact 
uh, on the energy savings uh, that typical wastewater treatment plants are able to incur on an annual basis. Uh, so, you know, we, we not only have to think about the here and now and using mm -hmm. new tools like SARS-CoV-2 monitoring uh, for combating the, the, the current pandemic, but we also have to think about the future and the economics and, and finding ways that we can make things more efficient. I am so glad you mentioned those. And will you do me a will you do me a favor? In in three months' time, can we come back and can we talk specifically about those products? Because I I'm sure this audience is going to love to hear more about that. You've you've nailed two major issues: the energy consumption and 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 you know how you get your ATP um, uh, uh, your ASP plants working properly. They're, that's brilliant feedback. Uh, I'd love to revisit it. Um, I'd be very pleased to do that, Pierce. Pat, let me thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Uh, it's organizations like yours and people like you who are the heroes of the, the hour right now as we collectively try and get ourselves out of this mess. Thank you for your time and have a great week. Thanks very much, Pierce. I appreciate it.